Hello. I haven't made a video for quite a few days now and that was because of a combination of several things. And one of them was to do with Covington. You know, it, it really disturbed me to see children being targeted in, in that way. But that was the previous week. But something else happened. No sooner had I got back, or I, I was offline for a while because I was away from my computer out riding for a couple of days with a friend. Uh, but no sooner had I got back than it was Holocaust Memorial Day and I was invited by some neighbours to go to a local church for a memorial service. And uh, I'm afraid that knocked me sideways. Uh, and it wasn't just the thinking about the horrors of the Holocaust. It was, I started thinking about what happened to those Covington kids in the firestorm started by that fake Indian, whatever he was called, dances with refrigerators or something. Imagine what would have happened if it were just the media that were reporting it, if there were no internet, uh, no Tim Pool, no platform uh, upon which the Covington uh, group could put their side of the story. All we'd have would have been the spin put on that story by the media. Those kids would have been demonised for the rest of all eternity. Their lives would have been destroyed. And we know now that the media were reporting the story in that way because they had an agenda and they didn't care what damage they did uh, in their efforts to get at not only faith schools and white kids, but also, of course, President Trump. It was just too juicy an opportunity for them to turn down. But as I said, those kids would have suffered for that for the rest of their lives. And it reminded me, and I sort of tied that in with what happened to the Jews during the Nazi era, the early Nazi era, when there was a constant flow on radio and in movies and uh, special documentaries, there were plenty of those, and radio programmes picking on a particular image for Jews that was relentlessly pushed into the national psyche of the German people. It, it frankly wasn't as if that national psyche needed much pushing because although Hitler was a focus, he was just saying what the audience wanted to hear. Just like the media was telling people to see what their audience wanted to see. Uh, of course, the, the video was free, freely available, wasn't it? And that's ex exactly what the audience did see despite the reality of what was in front of them. I tie, in my mind, I, I tied that in with a video that was recommended to me by another YouTuber uh, who runs quite a few conspiracy theories but is not an unintelligent person by any means. The video is called Europa, The Last Battle and it does exactly the same thing as what you see in the Covington video uh, idea, incident rather, rather than the video. Uh, Europa is a 10 episode work and I didn't watch it all because I was sickened by it because uh, it was exactly this sort of thing. Everything was twisted and misaligned. I can't go into a long critique about it, but I can give you a couple of examples. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Uh, first of all, there's a skewing of perception like this. The narrator says something like, while Germans starved, and then there's a clip of hopeless families on the streets. Some members of German society, including Jews, were doing okay. And then there was a clip of a busy restaurant with waiters carrying trays laden with food and a lot of jolly, well-fed people. 
Uh, and it looked to me like a film about the stinking rich, really, anyway, uh, that they, they just shoved in there. And of course, there were Jews who were starving as well. I mean, it was the middle classes in Germany who was uh, hit worst by the devaluation of the mark, uh, but they, they don't mention that. Then there were the outright lies, like Zionists uh, convinced the American government to enter the First World War on the side of the British. Now, if you read the literature of the time, you would realise pretty quickly that no government, British or American, would fall in on the side of a few Jews while Arab oil was becoming so important. What brought the Americans into the First World War was when the British government handed over an intercepted telegram. Uh, it was a telegram from the German government to the Mexicans offering them financial and military aid if they wanted to attack America to get back what they saw, what they knew, what the Germans knew the uh, uh, Mexicans saw as the stolen states of Arizona, New Mexico and Texas. The German hope was that a war with Mexico would slow down food shipments from the US to Britain, which no doubt it would have done. But none of this was mentioned in Europa, it was just evil Zionists. Now, what I found most depressing about this whole business is that there's no doubt I have several followers on this channel who, among their usual witty, intelligent observations, still come out with such stuff as I could see in the Europa video. Intelligence seems to be no defence at all against this type of virus. And you might say, well, so what? If people are intelligent and anti-Semitic, then they might have a point. And then I think of a couple of cases I've heard of recently where fine young men just drop dead in the middle of a football game or a race or some other athletic activity. And people say, oh, he was so fit, so strong. How could this happen? And the answer was that however fit he was, there was some weakness at his heart that ended up killing him. Now, just for those of you who want to pick a fight, I'm not saying that kids with undiagnosed heart problems are Nazis. You'd think that having to say that wouldn't be necessary, would you? But experience has taught me that it is. Uh, but back to the main point, the fact is that when you see anti-Semitism cropping up, even among the most cultural and the most intelligent, it's a symptom of upcoming disaster, however cultured and intelligent they are. And if you're on Twitter and have ventured into the dark, mean tweets uh, dealing with this subject, you'd see there's quite a bit of vitriol about it. It's like a disease that's taking hold of even the best and brightest. I don't know whether it's a cause or just a sign, but there's no doubt that an anti-Semitic society is heading for the buffers. And you want to know, I think that this Covington business is to do with that. It's the same sort of mindset. Uh, a wish to blame a certain group on all the ills in society. It grabs you. You pick on a couple of things, you push those images, and you can't get out of that loop from then on. And that's why I got so depressed, because there's a lot of talk about that over here in the UK, especially in the Labour Party, which seems to be heading full pelt down that rabbit hole. But it's not just Labour. A lot of people, including people I respect, or, or used to respect anyway, are heading down that path, the conspiracy path, the easy hate path, the pick on a small uh, item and, and magnify it until it overwhelms you path. And, and they can't see that they're heading down a blind alley. And I love this country. And I hate to see this happening. That's it. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you wish to donate, it's through PayPal at grannyopteryx at gmail.com. Till next time.